I'm going to talk about a bass. Never talk about bass stuff that much. Uh, and it's funny because I'm actually been playing bass a lot longer than I'm playing guitar. So I'm going to talk about something today because uh, there's absolutely zero reviews on the internet about it. Now when I say zero, I mean there's no video reviews, there's no typed reviews, there's nothing. It's like this thing doesn't exist. This is the new Phil Jones BG400. I think it came out last year. Definitely I saw it in December and that's what got me peaked about it. So, um, and I know that if you guys are looking at this, you're pretty much uh, screwed for two reasons. One, you don't have a local dealer that stocks it. And two, there's no uh, reviews. So I was lucky enough, uh, I live in Arizona, and there is the base place up in Peoria. So I went down and actually was able to try it before I bought it. And it was amazing, so I bought it. $1,200 and it's worth every penny. And let me explain why. So if you're familiar with Phil Jones, uh, and if you're looking at this video, you already know what this is. So odds are you have something like it. So let's do some comparisons. I had the briefcase. The briefcase is very nice, okay? It's a great amp. And the only reason I wanted to get out of that amp was it didn't have an ability to plug in auxiliary. In other words, I couldn't put in my MP3 player and play along with the bass. So this had a feature. So I started looking at the Cub, the BG100. And then I saw this and it got me curious, but it was so much more money than its double. It went from 595 to 1195, so it's double the money. Let me start right there. It is double the money, it is absolutely double the volume, if not three or four times the volume, without a doubt. There's no question of that. In fact, if you have a briefcase, this is double the volume of that, without a doubt. Double the bass, double the fullness, double the power, it's just huge sounding. In fact, uh, and that's without combining with any other cabinetry, which already made it insane when I was playing through that. Okay, um, first of all, let me start with this. In a home playing uh, situation, like a practice amp, it is insanely loud. You have to keep the limiter pretty high. Otherwise, otherwise it's really just boomy. A lot of guys, I'm gonna drop D. A lot of guys are gonna worry about B string. Uh, it will definitely handle a B string. Now, will it go to optimum volume? Optimal volume with the B string? Probably not, but no amp will. Um, but here's what I can tell you without a doubt. If you guys own any of those other type amps uh, from, from Phil Jones. If you own the BG-150, BG-100, or the um, the uh, BG-300, I think, is the other one, and the BG, or, or the briefcase. If you own any of those amps, without a doubt, this is A, tw double the volume of those amps, or equal to, or slightly better than, in volume of power, right? Just more physical focus base. Um, so that is impressive. It looks like it's the power section is what's driving the crap out of these speakers. That's what's improved everything. It's not new speakers, there's no new design. This obviously is the same preamp looking six section that comes in the BG100. So it looks like all he did was uh, improve the power section. That is the weird one thing about this amp that is different. It is heavy, okay? Um, I forget the model, but there was a precursor to this that had a big and everybody reviewed it said it was heavy. This amp's a little weighty. Um, it's small, so it's easy to transport, no doubt about that. Um, it says it's 30 pounds, feels like 50, okay, so it's not light. If you have a bad back, I would check one out before you bought one. Uh, everybody else, you know, you just suck it up and lift it. It's, again, it's a small, it's a small footprint. It's easy to carry because it's small, but um, it's weighty, and the reason I think I, my understanding of why that has changed is that what they did different with this amp is it is a digital preamp, in front of the amp, but there is a solid state power section, and that's where they're getting all this power from, and I think that's where they get the warmth. Without a doubt, it has a more organic, if I could say, you're right, Phil Jones has a hi-fi sound. It still retains that kind of hi-fi-ness, but it now adds a warmth. Um, I wouldn't say reminiscent to tubes, but definitely a reminiscent to the older solid state amps that, that had a, you know, just a nice, just kind of nicer warmer rounder note if that's a thing um so uh, uh i'm sure that's what's weighting it up i'm sure there's a big giant heat sink or transformer in there or both combination um because one thing is i noticed it doesn't get very hot it barely gets lukewarm uh running it for even a couple hours so that's impressive as well uh fax loop all that stuff i mean that stuff you can look up i know the main question i had was is this the right amp for me um i will say this i don't think it's the right amp for me um, I, I'm not going to get rid of it. I like it. Uh, the BG100 is a lot quieter, and for practicing at home, I'm really running the limiter almost at full blast. When I got it home, this will give you an idea for you guys practicing at home, it was almost impossible to not rumble. Everything is so powerful. 
I don't mean loud. That's a different thing. I mean powerful. It, it just fills a room with sound. It was, it was immense. Uh, I actually had to put it on a stool off the ground and then work the lender out and then uh, to, to con 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 contain this thing. Um, uh, so I took it in and I jammed with uh, an amp already, a guitar player. Um, and um, I had him crank the amp and I cranked my... Now they were running a 25 watt tube head through a cabinet and um, I played this and I was crushing. It was just, it was, it was bass on tap for sure. Um, of course, you know, as you dig in and you get, a, you get a little flubby if you're pushing it, but everything else was tight and great. Um, everything you would expect from Phil Jones. If you're new to Phil Jones, um, this would be the one I would probably check out first because a lot of the smaller ones, they're not gonna compete with this. Price point again, 1200 bucks. It's double the smaller classification amps, but it is at least double the output in the way it feels and perceives and comes across. So um, so it's definitely worth it, right? Unfortunately, you know, it's a heavy price tag, but it's definitely worth it. Um, the slightly bigger ones and, you know, ones with the up firing stuff, um, that, that, that the whole concept of the monitor and stuff is really good, but um, I, you just don't notice it with this. The only critiques I have, right, right off the bat, I mean, obviously I wish it was a little lighter, but it's, it's fine. I wish it had the kickstand like the BG100. Um, when playing it, I know it has to do with more contact on the floor, yada, yada, yada. It's more of a, a, more of a legit gigging amp and less of a practice kind of profile amp. But uh, when I kicked it up at me like a monitor, uh, I was a lot happier. You know what I mean? The, um, it just it just seemed a little smoother. The tool channels were awesome, but again, all that stuff familiar with BG100. Um, so again, I just wanted to give you this vote of confidence out there uh, about it. And um, my other standard is they're hard to come by. I, when I when I was looking, there wasn't very very many Phil Jones dealers had them in stock. The base place had them in stock, which was awesome. Uh, so that's a shout out to the base place because I don't work there, so I have no uh, uh, what do you call it? No incentive to tell you, but I would definitely go to thebaseplace.com to get mine because um, they'll ship it to you fast and it's good and uh, they're great guys so thanks for your time guys know your gear